Right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Profile Tone. Nice. Here we go. Woo. All right. All right. Okay. Switch on. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. Get your head on. Switch on. <laughs> Pavel Nedved. Ned hey. Vieira. Hello. Neddy Vedder. One of my favourites, Marcus. <laughs> Neddy Vedder. <laughs> Good. One of my favourites, Marcus, so please continue. Uh, can I? Mm. Uh, he was born on the uh, August the 30th, 1972. Five years after. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not even bothered that anymore, come on. No. <laughs> of course Get he, to the good stuff. Of course he was a, he's a former Czech international footballer. Um, did you know, gentlemen, that when he was younger, his parents encouraged him to become an accountant? I know he's got some sort of qualification. Yeah, he's he's, he's really well-read. Is, it? is it what it is? Mm. Yeah, he's, he's well-read. So mm. that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, it wasn't to be. Uh, by the age of 19, he was playing for uh, Duke La Prague oh, yeah. in, the, in the Czech leagues. And uh, it was it, within a season, he was at uh, a big rival's Sparta Prague. I've been to Prague. It's a very nice place. It I is have. a beautiful city. Although yeah. decimated by English stag do. Stop getting married, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, at Sparta, he won three consecutive league titles between 92 and 95. Yeah. yeah. And it was the consistency of his performances that uh, earned him a spot in the national side. So this is when he came into my um, my sort of um, knowledge when he when he played when he was in the Euro 96 squad. In yeah. Euro 96. They were an excellent team as well they were then. That's right. Well he, he made his debut for Czech Republic in June 94 um, against Ireland actually. Um, but uh, absolutely Euro 96 is when he really came um, to the forefront. They could have won it. Well they got to the final of course mm. yeah. When he when he first came uh, came into the scene, mm. he always used to remind me. He looks a bit like Jürgen Klinsmann, and I always used to confuse me in my brain. I think he looks like Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze, yeah, I'm Patrick Swayze, Swayze. yeah, mm. oh, good. yeah, all like your mum's mate. Yeah, he looks a bit like that. Yeah, <laughs> he's better looking than your mum's mate. Yeah, he's very handsome in my opinion. He looks, like, he, he looks like a bit like a computer game footballer. Yeah, yeah. he's got like a very angular face, yeah. but like yeah. a made up computer game footballer that's been yeah. made up to look like a sort of stand out. Footballer Rivaldo, <laughs> <laughs> excellent point, well mate. Yeah. Rivaldo also looks like a computer game footballer. Yeah, email right. him with your, your footballers that look like computer game footballers. Yeah. Yeah? You pixelated men. Do, do, do us a favour. <laughs> Sorry, Harry, <laughs> Marcus. Um, so of course Euro '96, they got to the final. Um, were beaten by Germany two one. Boo. Um, yeah. But uh, he he had a very good very good tournament, and and that's where you know he was spotted by some of Europe's big clubs and after Euro 96 he was signed by Lazio yeah I remember that um, and he uh, won the Coppa Italia with Lazio he won the league he, he inspired them to the league if I remember <clears throat> right in 2000 and then mm. the, the season after that he signed for Juve he did for yeah for about 40 million euros well of course he, like that, he yeah. won the cup yeah. winners cup as well oh sorry yeah yeah, yeah Lazio did, yeah. played in the last ever one at Villa Park yeah. scored the last ever goal of the whole tournament mm. And of course, at Lazio, he played with uh, another Dean Windass Hall of Famer, Christian Vieira. Vieira, yeah. yeah. Legend. Yeah. It's almost like we put someone in every week, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Coming up, cropping yeah. up in other profiles. Um, uh, the Czech Republic qualified for Euro 2000. Um, they went out in the first round, but they played some good football. And I, I fancied mm. them that tournament. Well, I, I mean, I mentioned you sort of Jan Koller and uh, you know Stepstam earlier when they played Holland. Um, but they were so unlucky that particular match. Yeah. Holland got a lucky penalty in the yeah. last few moments, but they. Czech Republic was superb, mm. and it, it, you know someone like because it played Holland and France. Who it was would, annoying because I was touting them before the, before the tournament. Yeah, yeah, bit of a shame. But again, though, it, it never had played well for them that tournament, and uh, he was getting you know huge uh, write ups all Rave across. Rave reviews, your, you yes, could say the, that as well, Luke. <laughs> um, and this didn't go unnoticed. By the big boys, Juventus. The old lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like 40 million euros or something? Well, they just sold uh, Zenedine Zidane. And in 2001, they paid 41 million euros, or it was about 25 million pounds at the time, in, mm. in 2001. Mm. He was effectively a replacement for uh, Zenedine Zidane. <laughs> well, well that, it's incredible when you think about it, because he, he, did, he did quite literally effectively replace him, didn't he? He was very, very good. And he he <laughs> yeah. just slotted in very well. He's it was an absolute legend at Juventus. He's a superb player. I mean, that, that is some big shoes to fill. Yeah. yeah. But, he, but he filled them, you know, and they, and they won... Uh, the, the Scudetto um, a, f- a number of times 0 one o two o two o three o four o five o five o six yeah a couple th- of them were struck off though do you think Juventus well, yeah. were having a sort of dig at Zidane's baldness by getting Nedra <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, this is a man's head of hair he got a Zidane. wonderful head of hair yeah you really flowing locks yeah, yeah, yeah very very, very so. reminiscent of Kanidja yeah, 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 yeah when he's in full flow very very true <laughs> um, he uh, was hugely um, influential when Juventus reached the 2003 Champions League final um, with Nedved scoring five goals along the way but 
unfortunately he missed the final because he yeah. got um, a booking suspended. Yeah, yeah. But it was it's right tragic. at the end of the game against uh, Real Madrid in the, in the second leg of the semi final. Mm. Mm. And it, I, th I think, if my memory serves me correctly, it was not long after he'd scored one of the goals, which looked to take Juventus through. Yeah, yeah. So the whole stadium was buzzing, and then he just got a silly. There was no Paul Gascoigne tears though. No. no, he's a hard Eastern European. Yeah, go for that. Who tends to his hair very, very delicately. <laughs> it is a shame that he missed that game because that is probably the most boring Champions League final in in living memory. Right, of course, just, Milan awful. won on penalties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Old yeah. Trafford, wasn't it? Yeah, it was right. Yeah, I mean they needed a play like that to kind of get the game going. But uh, even though he didn't play in the Champions League final, um, Neved was had such a great season that he was given uh, the Ballon d'Or. Mm -hmm. um, and well deserved. What, what, what an achievement! Mean, he was yeah. he was unstoppable at, at, around that sort of time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, super. I, I just I just remember that tackle. It was such a shame he never played in the final. Was it? Was it? I can't Static. remember the actual incident. Was it a definitely it a booking? Steve McManaman, he failed. That's all right. Yeah. Was it? Was it definitely? Yeah, no, a booking? it was definitely a booking, yeah. and he knew that as well as soon as he did it. Um, shame for him. Shame yeah, for no, him. No, a real shame. But if we move forward a short period of time, uh, Euro two thousand and four. Uh, he was playing for a much fancied Czech Republic side. Again? Yeah. He, mm. they, tell you what, they're, they're always much fancied, they're aren't really, they? They're really... I mean, is it Only in the European Championships. In yeah. 2002 World Cup, they went out in the first round. Yeah. Although you did... This is going back a few years, Luke. But yeah. I remember texting you around that time. And uh, you said after they beat the US 3-0 that you yeah. fancied Czechs to win the whole tournament. I think, I think they... When they went out in the first round. I think they're really continual underachievers on the world stage. Mm. I think they've always got a decent squad. I mean, if you look at all the tournaments we're going I think back, back... Not now, though. Yeah. Oh, not now. No, yeah, no, yeah. but I mean traditionally, yeah. Mm. yeah. And so much so that people who don't well, really watch teams. football other than in a World Cup to try and look quite intelligent will go, you know, I think the Czech Republic are going to win. <laughs> is, that, is that a dig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, text your friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah... The Euro 2004, I mean, they probably should have won that tournament. I mean, they beat um, Germany and Holland in the first mm. round. Mm. A great game against Holland. They were 2-0 down. They came back to win 3-2. Three three two, two. Yeah. Um, they beat Denmark 3-0 in the second round, but they were beaten by Greece, of course, who won it in the semi-finals. Ruthlessly efficient Greeks. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Still don't believe that happened. No, I yeah. saw it, but I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you mentioned earlier a couple of um, the titles he won with Juventus were stripped. Um, yeah, yeah. With the Calciopoli scandal. The Calciopoli yeah. scandal, absolutely. And they were relegated um, from Serie A down to Serie B. And, you know, his future was um, heavily discussed. Um, but he, he vowed to stay with Juventus and get them back into Serie A, and, which, of course, they did. Um, which was great to see them back in there and and, 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 and keep hold of, of of some of their top players. Well, definitely know. because it's not you know a lot of the players weren't really weren't at all involved in the Calciopoli scandal. Obviously, the fans weren't involved, so it's a real shame for them. Yeah. And you know they're they're genuinely a, a massive club. You know, mm. so it, it was obviously great to see them back in Serie. It was a horrible, horrible sort of episode in their history. You know, mm. one that I'm sure they were given the chance they would like to scrub off if they could. Yeah, no, very much so. In his last season, he um, in 2008-2009 season, he scored Juventus' first league goal of that season. Mm. Um, and then uh, he announced before the end of the season, of course, he was going to retire. And they were, he was given the captaincy for his final match against his former team, Lazio. And he uh, set up one of the goals and they won 2 0. And obviously, he was substituted just before the final whistle and was given standard a standing ovation, ovation yeah. by both sets of supporters. He's about 37 now, isn't he? Mm. He's been, I think he's been offered a, um, a job uh, on the coaching staff at Juve, but I'm not sure if he's taken it up. He says he wants to spend more time with his family, I think. Mm, Wasn't yeah. he going to go to Notts County at some point? Was he? Was he linked there? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, they were just trying to trick him into thinking it was Juve. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would travel up to Not Nottingham <laughs> on my own to watch <laughs> Neville play. I, I thought you were going to say to stop him jogging. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> to play up front with him. Um, but <laughs> after, oh, after that match, his final match, the Juventus players formed a, formed a guard of honour. Alessandro Del Piero, the club captain, presented Nedved with his very own special shirt. Nedved said at the end of his... Um, time with Juventus and of course the end of his career he said uh, I think that'll do is that what he said <laughs> that's a great he said, he said I can stop running now this is my last game and I need to stay close to my family I like to think that um, Nedved called like a press conference and just went I think that'll do <laughs> yeah. this, that's all he but said is, is everyone the way... here is everyone in <laughs> you're yeah. sitting there going, right, that'll do <laughs> I, I like that that'll do as if that was alright wasn't yeah, it yeah. I won the Ballon d'Or I'd say there was nothing more breathtaking of him and, than him and his pomp going yeah, forward yeah. the ball at his yeah. feet he had it always as a forward player he, he had that glide that the really great players yeah, have yeah. Yeah. and he could really whack goals so they were, again, oh, yeah, 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 like, like, uh, like last week's inductee he, he knew how to hit a ball yeah um, he, now this is interesting he won the golden foot 
Award, yes, that's right. The Golden the Foot, foot Award is, in is that for the, the best barefoot performance of a player? Is this uh, not yeah. a beach soccer thing? I'm afraid not. It is an international football award, and it is given to players who stand up for their um, athletic achievements, for their personality, and for the esteem of the public and football experts. And the award is only given to players over the age of 29. Oh, nice. Do you know who the current holder is? No. D back. Ronaldinho. Oh, is it? Of, of AC Milan. Why has there not been much more, much more press on this uh, particular <laughs> award, Marcus? I th because I think people don't really care. Oh, I, I certainly <laughs> do. Well, I do as well. That's why I've brought it to your attention. Mm. And, uh, and what's really nice, I really like how they do this, um, the award. Um, the winner leaves a permanent mould of his footprints on the uh, Champions Promenade, which is a kind of a walk of fame. Um, on the seafront um, of the Principality of Monaco. Must be very bumpy. Well, and so therefore a footballer can only win the Golden uh, Foot Award once. That's Why? Class. I'd love to see that. It's a really good award. I yeah. think it's an excellent yeah. award, yeah. And so he's won it. And, and rightly so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, you all remember Karol Pobolski, of course. Oh, as if I could forget him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I shall end by quoting... The very, very uh, thick-haired man. Yeah. Um, he said, who was the best player you played with? And he said, it's a difficult one. Because uh, I was always proud that I had the opportunity to play with great players like Eric Cantona and Peter Schmeichel. But if I had to mention just one, it would be Pavel Nedved. Come on in, Pavel. No one puts Pavel in the corner. No. <laughs> <laughs>